So how you guys doing? I was requested by a student to explain them all, and I responded back to the student, could you be a little more specific? So while I'm going to do these videos, it would help, and this is not just aimed at this specific student because it's a very common mistake students make in an online class. So they'll, they'll just name one thing and ask me to explain it, without being specific. The problem is, without specifics, if I explain it, it might not be addressing the need of the student. So in the future, when you ask me to do these things, what you want to do is look at your Newton activity and say something like, oh, on the Newton 7.2 activity, numbers two and number three, I'm having a problem because of this. Or in the PowerPoint chapter seven, Slides 12 through 19, I'm having a little problem because of this. I didn't hear back from the student, so all I can do really is address specifically what I think the mole is, even though that might not be the actual problem the student has. So the mole, at its very heart, what the mole is, is a conversion factor. It's converting from one quantity to another. And this was part of the reason why we were doing dimensional analysis at the beginning of the semester. We were using conversion factors, which you were already familiar with. So I was trying to emphasize, we're not just converting from one into the other, but doing this so that when we get to something that you're not familiar with, at least you know the underlying mathematics. So... With the conversion factors, with dimensional analysis, we would be converting from one unit into another, and we'd set it up in such a way that the, what we were converting from gets canceled out, and we'd end up with the units that we were converting to. The mole is just a conversion into a number. So... What a lot of textbooks, and ours is no exception, what we use as the analogy is the terms like a dozen, a case, a gross, or a ream. The problem with bringing this up is some students will think that a mole is a dozen, when it's not. A dozen is 12. A case traditionally meant 24 cans or bottles. That's changed uh, a lot in the last 20 years. A gross is 144. And reams are something specific that we use uh, in the paper industry. So a ream is a package of 500 sheets. So these are all examples of words that take a large number and make them into a smaller number. So instead of having to say, I have 240 eggs... Uh, you can instead say, um, I have 20 dozen, for example. Now, the mole is doing exactly the same thing. The thing about the mole is you never encounter it outside of chemistry or physics. So it's not something you're familiar with, like a dozen you know, or a gross. Most of you probably aren't familiar with a ream. But the mole is just 6.022 times 10 to the 23 things. That's also called Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23. It's actually this really astronomically large number. And I'll write it up for you here. You can see how large it is. I mean, I can say something like 602 trillion, 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 and I can keep saying that, and I won't ever approach the actual number. There's actually no word for it. <laughs> In order to express a quantity like this, you have to say a mole. Now, the reason why we use the mole is because a real-world quantity of something often has something on this order of magnitude. So if you're going to grab you know, 2.776 grams of a substance in the lab or something like three liters of a specific gas, you're going to have billions and trillions and zillions and zillions of molecules or atoms there. So the mole 
is a real-world quantity of a substance that we might use in the real world. We just don't use the term the mole in the real world. So the conversion factor for a mole specifically in chemistry, you'll find if that molar mass or atomic mass on the periodic table. So under hydrogen, you find the number 1.008. Under oxygen, you find the number 16.00. What that number is telling you is the number of grams in a mole of that specific substance. So by now you should realize that hydrogen gas is not just H and oxygen gas is not just O. Hydrogen gas is H2 and oxygen gas is O2. If we add up the molar masses of each of these substances, for H2 it will be 2 multiplied by 1.008. That will give us a final number of 2.016. So what that number means is that in 2.016 grams of hydrogen gas, I have a mole, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23 H2s, or Avogadro's number of H2s. We'll do the same thing for oxygen. The oxygen number on the periodic table is 16.00. Now, oxygen gas is O2. So what is the molar mass of oxygen gas? It is 2 multiplied by 16.00, or 32.00 grams. So this means if I have 32.00 grams of oxygen gas, I happen to also have a mole, or 6.022, times 10 to the 23 O2 molecules. Now, when you're doing a problem in chemistry, you're not going to be given round numbers like this. Well, sometimes you will, but often it'll be something like, you have 56.74 grams of oxygen gas. And it'll be your job to convert it into moles. Now with water, it's a little bit different. Because water, we have two things. We have H2 and O. So to calculate the mass of a mole, or the molar mass of water, we need to take 2 multiplied by hydrogen, or 1.008, and add to that 1 multiplied by oxygen, 16.00. And we end up with a number 18.016. So what that tells us, if I had 18.016 grams of water, which is very rare that you actually have that exact amount, you would have a mole, or Avogadro's number, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23 water molecules in that sample. Now again, most of the time, you're going to be given a number not round like that. So, 72.327 grams of water. Well, we convert that into moles by dividing by its molar mass, which we previously calculated. Now, the other reason for using the mole comes later. Because right after the mole, we're going to be talking about chemical equations and balancing chemical equations. So, we can take hydrogen gas and oxygen gas and chemically react them to create water. Now we have to balance the equation. Now when we're balancing the equation, um, and this will come later, make sure you're not changing these little subscript numbers over here. Never ever change those because then what you're doing is you're changing the reaction. Uh, if you do that, you're changing the question and you're not answering the question. You're answering another question and it doesn't matter if you answer it correctly if you're not answering the right question even though what you put down might be correct and on its own you still are not answering the question. So to balance this one way to do it is two H2s plus one when there's a one there you don't write it down 
O2 yields 2H2O. Now, when you're actually balancing this, you think about it in terms of atoms and molecules. But when you're actually using the chemical equation, you think about it in terms of moles. So balancing, you think about it, uh, two molecules of H2 and one molecule of O2 yields two molecules of H2O. But when you're actually solving a problem, it's about moles. So the other way to read this equation is two moles of hydrogen gas plus one mole of oxygen gas yields two moles of water. So hopefully that answered your question. Now, traditionally, this chapter is one of the most challenging chapters in the curriculum of Chem 131. And uh, the other chapter that becomes uh, challenging comes later. It's the acid and base chapter. But traditionally, a lot of students um, get hung up on moles and balancing chemical equations. And these students tend to walk away from chemistry. I mean, they can still finish the class and get a grade, but they walk away, meaning they don't ever come back to it. And they'll say things like, I can't deal with chemistry. It's all about the moles and the chemical equations. Now realize that moles and chemical equations, this is just a tool. It's still a fundamental uh, part of chemistry, but it's not actually chemistry. It's just one of the tools that chemists use uh, to process the information. So thinking that moles and chemical equations are what chemistry is about is kind of like someone in construction saying, I can't deal with building houses because that's all about hammers, nails, and screw guns. So you need these things as tools to do the task, but that's not actually um, what the subject is about. So hopefully this answered your question. If you need more specifics, please let me know. Um, and we can also do a Google Hangout. So during Google Hangout, I can do the same thing that I'm doing here, except you'll be talking to me and I can respond instead of just talking to this screen. So I can bring up PowerPoints. Uh, we can look at your Newton activities and we can talk specifically about things. So instead of office hours, I've got this Google Hangout going on and We've been doing this for two or three weeks now, um, the stay-at-home thing. And I have to say that the students took advantage of office hours uh, when we were able to meet on campus. It's pretty consistent with the students that are taking advantage of uh, this online format, too. The other thing that I'm saying in, in that is the students that never, ever came to office hours also are never, ever contacting me. So I'm here. Uh, just let me know. Shoot me off an email. Um, did you have a specific question about this? If you want me to make a movie, I'll do it. You know, just please be specific. Um, but if it's something that you think takes a dialogue or I think will take a dialogue, then we should really do it on the Google Hangout. So hopefully you're staying safe and, um, you know, washing your hands for 20 hours. Actually, that's not the right uh, quantity. Uh, 20 seconds. So, the time uh, to wash your hands is about the time it takes to sing happy birthday out loud. Okay? If you just sing it in your head, it's more like five seconds. But if you actually wash your hands and sing happy birthday out loud, you know, happy birthday to you, not before the, you, you don't have to sing the how old are you now part. Um, but the normal speed that you would go, that's about 20 seconds. It might be a little bit shorter, 18 or 19. So you know, if you want to, instead of counting to 20, sing happy birthday. But however, you know, if you're going out, you know, to get groceries and you want to wash your hands before you leave the grocery store, I suggest that you don't do this while you're in the bathroom. Uh, sing happy birthday out loud while you're washing your hands. Uh, we're at a very challenging time. I mean, it's good to, you know, have a little humor when it comes to these things. It help us, helps us. It's one way to help us keep us sane. But you know, certain things you, you shouldn't do, such as a sing happy birthday out loud. And when, when someone looks at you, you know, stare at them back while saying oh, happy birthday. Don't do that. So hopefully you're staying safe and um, keeping up with the curriculum. And um, maybe I can make another video. Just let me know.